So let's start with the brushes and the first thing I want to do in this lesson here is a reference image setup. In the last project we've done with the Houdini practice hour I used in the display options here the background images which is okay if you only have one image or you only need an image as an inspiration in the back but you also can really use image planes inside of Houdini and this is something I want to show you here. So let's deactivate the visibility of our glass here and then we add from our tab menu a reference image. If you add this here you have a container and inside of this container you also can double click it. Uh, you see there's a cop network running here and it delivers the image. So it's really close to the thing I've done last time. But here you have now the parameters on the outside and some really useful options here. Also it's on a plane. You see that we have an alpha channel here. So if you have an image which has an alpha channel which you've made in Affinity of Photoshop you can use it here. So next step would be now I change the orientation here to top and rename this image here reference top so that we later know what we have here and then we directly make our next reference image here which is then the reference side and we switch this to right. Now we have these two images here in the viewport. Now the next thing I have to do is I want to load my own images. So let's go to the top image first and here you see there's a file slot. If you have your own image network you can use an external cop. But in our case I want to use the cop which is inside. So let's go here to file. I load now. And you remember we want to make sure that we always have here and look in the dollar job variable in the front. So that the references of the files is depending on your job variable. So that's the case otherwise you click here and so you're now in your job folder and then you can go here to the references and we are in top. So let's take here this top JPEG and load this. And now you see in my viewport a little strange thing happens. You see I've loaded the image but still the butterfly is there. This is a behavior I don't know it's a bug or it's a problem with the workflow because you have to trigger the COP network inside of this container and sometimes it doesn't happen. My solution for that is I normally tend to click here really short here on use external COP which doesn't work because you don't have a COP path here and deactivate this again. And then you trigger with that the internal COP network and it loads the image. So that's my solution for that until um, side effects will fix that. Then we go here to the side image and we have the same problem. So first we load now here this image from the brush. Click, click, wait until it's loaded. Done. Wonderful. Now I save this and now I start first to uh, bring them into the same orientation. So this side image here I want to transform. You can go here to the transform section and do it here or you can use your handle tool so let's take the handle tool. I want to rotate this exactly in a quantized way. So hold down the control key and bring it 90 degree here. And then I do the same for Z. Control key. Here we are. And now comes the next step. I want to have it here exactly first in the middle of my scene. So let's deactivate. Um, let's go here to side. Let's start here. So this is our side image and I want to have it here exactly on my plane. And what you can do now is you can go here into a side view. So spacebar 4. Okay. And another thing which is sometimes annoying is that you don't see the grid here. A little tip from my side here. You can move the plane a little bit to the back so that the grid is in front. So this here is the X axis. You see you have here green and blue. So the X axis is looking into your direction. So go here to X and insert minus 0.1 for example. And now you see the image plane has moved back and now I see here the lines over uh, my image. Now take your time to place now here the image like you want. 
Okay, something like that here. And I also think I would make this plane twice as large because if I now look this here in the viewport, you see that's now one meter. So one meter is okay, but maybe two meters would also be a good idea. So I have a little bit more space later. So I go into both of them and change the uniform scale to two meters. Okay. That's great. And then we can go back here to the side view space before and do our work. So I place now the brush here. I think that's good. We will come back to this. Then we go here into the top view. So activate the top container, space but two, and do the same trick. We bring it first back a little bit. This is the Y this time. So minus 0.1. Then we see the grid. And then we move this here into the middle. Maybe you see that the brush is not perfectly aligned here. So if this is a problem for you, you can use the rotation here. A little tip at this side here, you can have a, a slower movement while holding down the shift key. You see if you hold down shift, you can make this really slow if you think that's important for you that the reference is really perfectly aligned here. And then I move now the brush here until I'm happy with that. Okay. And now we have to align these two guys exactly to each other. So let's activate the second plane here. Look into here the viewport. Remember we have moved them a little bit out. So I remove these values again. So now it's in the middle. And now you see, oh, Helga hasn't sized them correctly. How do we solve that? Little easy workflow tip at this side. You decide which image you want to keep. I want to keep, for example, here the side image or let's keep the top image. This is the image which I want to exactly align to. So I go here to the side and now first I move it until I have one edge here perfectly aligned. Something like that here. Now we see on the other side the problem. Okay, that's nice. And then I move this widget here. And this widget here is placed in the pivot of the plane. You can move the pivot here if you like, or you can make a right mouse button, click or use your insert key and use the pivot mode. But let's see what happens. If you go now to the pivot mode, you normally can move your pivot around. But in the same moment you do that, you now see, ah, oh, the plane moves. The reason for this is really simple. You have here values and they calculate always from the pivot. And if you change the pivot, these values are still there. So we first have to clear out these values. Normally you first move your pivot, but we have done so much work. How to do that? The solution for this is named pre-transform. In other applications, it's named freezing of values. And if you freeze a value, you set it to zero and the container inside stores the values for you. So you go here to the pre-transform and all these values here are translation values and rotation values. You can clear out scales, you can clear out rotates, you can clear out translates. And if you want to clear out all three of them, you go here and say clear transform. You see everything is zero now, but Houdini has stored the value inside in a hidden place. So now you have zero values here. And if you ever want to have these values back, you can open this up and here is an extract pre-transform to get these values back. But we use now these cleared out values here for moving the pivot. So if you now click here and say, I want to move my pivot, now it works like a charm. You see, wonderful. I move my pivot here until I hit exactly the end here of these two. Don't forget to leave the pivot mode again. I do it by right mouse button, you, but you can use the insert key on your keyboard if you like. And now all the translations you do are working from this point on. So if you now go here and say, I want to scale, now you can 
change here the widget you remember if you press the Y key you can toggle through all the different modes of the widget you can now click here and now you can scale from this point here until you see exactly what you want or you can go really close here go over scale not one value here because you want to scale proportionally so you go here over scale hold down your middle mouse button go a little bit deeper here to have a slower movement and i scale now until i hit here i think yeah the right spot something like that here if you're now happy you can clear the transforms again and then you can zero out the pivot again. So if you now go to a plane again, you see now the pivot sits where you want to have it. Both images are now aligned here. And now we can start modeling. If you really want to build a cage out of that, you have to remember that you have to move this brush a little bit down because the photo shows the top. So you would place it somewhere here yeah maybe that's okay but yeah that depends on the modeling um, approach you want to take if you're ready you have cleared out everything and this is a really a good saver because if you later see in the modeling process that you want to move a plane a little bit to the back or um, down so that you can model a little bit better because these planes are in your way it's good because you can then go back to clear values without making undos. That's the reason why I remove all the pre-transforms here out of these normally so that I work with clear data. To prevent me from selecting these in the viewport, you can deactivate this green flag. This green flag here is the selection flag. And now you can't select these planes here in the viewport anymore. And now we are ready to start modeling in the next lesson.